Okay, before we close this out here, um, I want to point out these tokens here. And these are tracking tokens. Notice they're both the same. What's going to happen now is Red Widow is going to track Matari. She just doesn't let her go. So what you're going to do is you take one tracking token, put it on Matari's or the hero card, and put this token on the Guardian's card to signify, you know, it's tracking that hero now. So I'm going to do that. And then we'll get into later. There's a few ways to escape a Guardian. You know, if the hero or heroes kill the Guardian, um, in the chambers, you're going to notice, like, right here, there's numbers. There's a way that a hero can hide within a chamber um, to escape a guardian and lose the tracking status and a few other things, but we'll go over that more in depth. But I hope you enjoyed, you know, learning about the guardians and they are very tough. Um, my strategy already, we're going to get Mahaliak and Zeke up here and we're going to do like kind of a boss beat up. We're just going to Womp on Red Widow, cast Magic Missile everything and we're going to take her out okay let us move on to nefarion and see what's going to happen hey i want to say something about the video you just saw that last two minutes um it was very late when i shot that and my 64 gig um, sd card was just about out and i had to wipe a bunch of videos so i was like on a timer almost so um, I didn't think that came out that good, so I want to apologize about that. So going back to what I said, um, we're going to, as we wrap up turn six, which is coming up in a few minutes, um, we're going to go over um, what's going on here and talk about something I've said before in videos about guardian hunting parties. And this is where you take two or three heroes and create kind of like a special forces team and they go out to wipe out guardians. And it's a very fun part of the game. So that's what I wanted to say, and I was just on a time crunch because of my SD card was almost full. So we're gonna talk about hiding in a chamber and a few th other things that I want to say. And next, I always try to give you guys quality information and, and give you, you know, everything I can about the game. So um, we'll talk about that at the very end, okay? And so let's go over and see what happens with Nefarian. And here we are with Nefarian. And I want to say I feel better about saying what I said. Okay, so he is about to move right now. Let's take a look at his monster card. We can see he is versed in, of course, Chaos Warfare, Ranged Warfare, and Arcane. That's perfect for our heroes right here, of course. So... And he is going to move three quadrants. So there's a 50% chance that um, he's going to go this way. So let's see what's going to happen. Roll the patrol route die for his first move as I knock that, knock into that. And green. And certainly, just like I said, he is going to move on the green patrol route, which is right here. So he'll go on the green patrol route, come down, come up, and as he goes up that hallway, he has spotted Maheliak. He is gonna move adjacent, and I'll just put him like this. Let's look at that, remember that, um, the target priority box. Let's take a look here. Well, he would target a C3, which would actually be Zeke. He's one of our class three heroes, but he is, of course, not in line of sight. However, and this is a good rule, say that Zeke was here, he would attack him because that's on his target priority box, okay? But he's not. So I just put him this way, and, you know, he caught sight of Mahaliak. We're going to have a battle. And I think we're just, <clears throat> I think we can just do this right here. Um, yeah, let's try it. Let me get the warfare tokens, and um, we'll get this going. Okay, this is going to be a very fun battle. Remember when I would say um, Dungeon Crusade is almost like a thinking man strategy game or dungeon crawl game? When we go to wrap up, that's definitely going to kick in, and even right now. So I hope you're enjoying this. This is going to be a good battle. Let's discuss something first. Looking at Nefarian's card, 
um, you know, there's the damage, of course, is the one to the right. So Nefarian has, there's a potential of five damage that could be put on Mahaliak. That would be, it wouldn't be good. So I just wanted to point that out first. There's a potential of five damage. Um, I do have his intimidating shout and counter attack. We're definitely going to be using these. So this is just going to be an interesting battle, how this plays out. And I have a lot to say about turn seven. Turn seven is going to be very awesome. So let's start with this. Like I said, we'll try to go quick with this because I think you're fairly acclimated. Defend, right? Put those right on there. Guardian is attacking. Your hero must defend. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our our warfare tokens, give them a shuffle, and let's put them, how about up here, okay? So phase one is ranged. Um, and let's take a look at that. I'm, we could, it's either going to be ranged or chaos. We're going to attack it, okay? 12, one. Um, I'm just thinking if we should activate counterattack now because we have a plus three with Mallory's golden bow yeah so let's just do that so we're going to um activate counterattack. we're going to pay that one essence now he's he's low on essence guys this is going to take him right down to one and we may use that last one for intimidating shout so first phase of combat he's gonna he's gonna attack nefarion he's gonna pull out his Mallory's golden bow and that is a 12, right? But remember, Mallory's Golden Bow gives him a plus three to ranged warfare, nothing on his card. He pulls his bow back and great freaking hit. 16 plus his three, that's 19. That was a, a mega hit. So remember two damage. I have the two damage right here and I'm gonna set it aside. So we have two damage on the Farion. He is down to four health. Okay. Clear the warfare tokens. Get rid of the dice. Um, so now he is definitely gonna to have to defend. Next phase. Okay, this is the one I was worried about. Um, Arcane. I'll show you his card real quick. He has got the so he is not proficient at all. Um He's a barbarian, so he's not good with arcane. We're going to have to minus three from this. Um, with that being said, it's time to activate intimidating shout. So he's just going to do his huge barbarian intimidating shout on Nefarion and try to lower that warfare um, by two, right? Yeah, once activated, select one of the monster's warfare values and lower it. Um, or two for this combat round. So I just wanted to refresh your memory on that. And we'll activate it. He is out. That's it. He is out of essence. He is the last of it for this. We'll put a two here to remember to take that out. And now remember, he has to defend with this. He has to, you know, meet or exceed that value. But that moves that take a look at that so that moves that 10 down to an eight but remember he has to deduct three from this nine minusing that three what's that six nope he did not guys that did not help him at all and the damage is that's two so nefarian strikes and takes him down by two, so is that one and two? So Maheliak is down to seven health. Clear this. Okay, we're in. I'll clear that too. Clear the worker dice, and of course the last one is he has to defend in chaos. Um, he has a plus three on his card, and so he can add plus three to this. Let's take a look at Nefarian, and that is a. 13, so he needs at least a 10 to defend against Nefarian. So picture it, Nefarian's about to leap on him. He's gonna defend and um, that's on the crack. I'm gonna reroll 
It was on the crack of the table here. Nope. Nope, not at all. Yeah, 13, even with that, that's of course a five plus three, eight. No, and that's gonna hit him for two damage. Matari and Mahaliak are in trouble. So we're gonna move that down to, he has five health remaining. Guys, I hope you liked that battle. That was, that was pretty intense. Um, yeah, so let's move on because now his turn's done. He attacked. Turn seven is going to be very interesting. Let's move on to our last minion, our new goblin footman. We'll get him activated. We'll pull the camera back, do a wrap up, and talk about our strategy. And it's going to be a crazy turn on turn seven. And I just want to give you a look at the monster area kind of like the situation what's going on of course um red widow has one damage from atari nefarion has two damage and we're about to activate our goblin footman i am so excited for turn seven because wait till you hear the plan i have um it's gonna be a lot of fun all right let's go over to our goblin footman and activate him and we are with our elite goblin footman who was up in the cesspool north area and you know what i thought if they were using a bigger you know movement die that'd be crazy if the goblin footman moved all the way south into that area that's just you never know what's going to happen in this game and i love that so um base movement of three and it does have a special ability but that's only if it's a raiding minion the screeching alarm so we have our movement die Base movement of three, picking up a patrol route, and not a lot of movement. Two plus three is, um, that's five. And it's going to go on the purple patrol route, which is, let me get these out of the way, right here. So one, two, three, four, and five. So it's heading into the spider lair to this patrol, or the skull pile node right there. Okay, that wraps up turn six. Let's talk about our plan for turn seven. And I tell you, there's gonna be a lot of action in turn seven. Okay, let's first discuss um, our first hot spot, as I call it, in the dungeon. Matari is gonna get slaughtered. Let's just face it. She doesn't have, you know, she's not proficient in those warfare types that Red Widow is. She's low on health. So, and something I can teach you about the game, and we can discuss now so we can get right into it in turn seven. A hero can always hide in a chamber. Um, we're gonna look at one, but let me show you Matari's card and explain this. And I think you'll really, I think you really enjoy this game mechanic. So remember, these are all our attributes right here. Well, this one, with this like guy behind a wall, um, this is the hide. And this is, picture it, it's um, how well a hero can conceal themselves, you know, and, and go hidden, unseen. So you can see she's very good, that's a three. So Matari is great at hiding. Now you're gonna notice, so what, my, what I'm saying is we're gonna have Matari run away from Red Widow and hide because remember, she is being tracked. In Dungeon Crusade, the guardians don't just say, okay, I'm gonna beat up your hero, then that's it, no. They will, they will try to hunt them down and kill your hero. So we have to lose this tracking status. So just picture, Picture it like this, and Matari's running, going into a chamber to hide somewhere to lose the tracking status of Red Widow. Okay, let's, um, let me try to move the camera very carefully and we'll discuss hiding. It's kind of a cool mechanic, okay? So she is, of course, right over there. Notice this chamber here, and hopefully you can see this. This has 15 on it. Like over here, I don't know if you can make that out. That's a 16. Um, there's 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 a bunch of, there's values on all of the chambers. And I think the lowest one, there's a few like 13s and then, you know, 14, 15, 16, all the way up to 20. And this is how I want you to think of this. These values represent how many maybe objects are in a chamber, okay? So if you see a number like 13 on a chamber, 
there's like a lot of crates in there. Maybe there's some coffins. Maybe, you know, there's, you know, just other things where a hero can find places to conceal themselves, you know, to hide. Where the higher number chambers, say like if it says 20, oh, that chamber is bare. There's nothing in there. There's nowhere for that hero really to hide because you're going to have to roll the D20 to see if your hero has successfully hidden from a guardian. You see how that works? It's a very cool little mechanic. So you're going to notice that all over the dungeon, every single chamber, guys, has values. You know, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, all the way up to 20. So Matari is going to try to hightail it out of the siege tile here to northern quarters. And her on her first turn, that's why I said there's going to be a lot of action going on. First turn, she's going to go in here. But the rule is... A hero can only hide in an empty chamber, a clear chamber. We have a level one champion monster. So she's first of all gonna fight this monster and hopefully kill it. That way with her second initiative, she can do a hide check. If she succeeds with the hide check, guess what? She loses the tracking status. Red Widow can no longer track her. That is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna see some, you know, when she runs into this chamber, she's gonna be ready to fight a monster. And then we're going to see if she successfully hides. That's going to be a fun part. Let's go over here and talk about Nefarion. Okay, and here we are in our second hot spot in the dungeon. And man, this is going to be a great battle. Plain and simple, we're going to light up Nefarion. We're going to take him out. So my plan is we're going to have Zeke move up. He's going to blast him with a magic missile. Then um, Maheliak is going to go on the attack. And then to, if he's not dead, we're going to have Zeke move up. A little bit reckless because, you know, he's good with Arcane. We're going to have Zeke come up then and try to, you know, finish him off. Hopefully, Mahalia can put a lot of damage on him. So this is going to be one great battle right here. <laughs> Albus is probably going to stand by for the moment. Well, you know what we can do? We can, um, we'll move him closer, but, you know, this... You know, Mahaliak's engaged in combat, so you can't do any kind of trading because it makes sense, right? He's fighting. He can't tell Nefarian, oh, wait, chill, dude. I got to give my dog some gold to go back to the village. Can't do that. So um, we'll finish up everything. We'll probably activate Albus last. And that's what we're going to plan to do. And I think it, turn seven is going to be awesome. Okay, let's pull the camera back and wrap this up. And guys... This wraps up turn six and what a churn it was. Seriously, I'm telling you, I am so excited to get to turn seven to see what's going to happen. And, you know, just consider something, you know, we're only playing, you know, with the solo crusader mode, but when you play full on dungeon crusade with six heroes, say you have like 10 minions in the dungeon and maybe three or four guardians. It's just, everything is just popping in this game. But this is good, especially for new players to see this. It's, it's enough for them to, you know, to, to be digestible so they can, you know, see how everything works and, you know, how the gears turn in the game. But turn seven is going to be awesome. What I meant to say also is, as I point you back down to our one hot spot, my plan is this, when I talked about guardian hunters, and this will be good to wrap up with, we're hoping, we're hoping that Mahaliak and Zeke will take out Nefarion. And then... And, oh yeah, we're hoping that um, Matari will be able to hide in that chamber in the northern quarters because then we're going to gather all three heroes together, have our guardian hunting party, and track down Red Widow and kill her. Just kill, kill, kill her. <laughs> it's going to be fun. All right, guys, I'm going to get this thing uploaded. I want to get the turn seven directly after immediately, so stay tuned. Um, it's going to be a very fun churn. And then, of course, we got to go to the, um, whoops, the ancient depths. And with the red bases there. Oops. And we got to get the wine bottles. And then guess what? Our quest, our quest table one is complete. So there's still so much to see in the game. Okay, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for turn seven. And I'm going to be talking to you very soon. Bye-bye.